Light in the darkness, my God. 
don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, never stop working. Never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, never stop working. You never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop. Our King, come let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcome. He has done great things. He has done great things. Conquer the grave, you free every captive and break every chain. Oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awaken the life. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great. You'll be faithful forevermore You have done great things And I know you will do it again For your promises, yes and amen You will do great things God, you do great things Captain and break every chain, oh God, 
keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough Every single lie that tells me I will never Live it and believe it in me She'll never die I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though this body be destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God. Whom shall I see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another. Let not your heart be troubled, he that believeth in God, believeth also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And I'll come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, ye may be also. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. For I, the Lord, will uphold thy right hand, say it unto thee. Fear not, I will help thee, saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so, said the Spirit, for they rest from their labor. Praise the Lord, everyone. Come on, we can do the better than that. Praise the Lord, everyone. Grateful to God today for this privilege to be in his house. Amen. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Today we are grateful unto God for his power giving us this day. Such a beautiful day outside. Amen. It's a difference from yesterday. Thank God that he's a God of variety that just, just, just doesn't give us one thing, but give us a few things that completes our lives. Amen. If we had too much rain, it would be a flood. If we had too much sun, it would be a desert. But he's a God that gives us everything. Today, I greet you in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. And it's a sad occasion, but the scripture says we should give thanks in all things. Amen. The bereaved family, we grieve with you, we mourn with you. At your loss, um, the pain of separation has consumed another home. But thank God this is not the end. promised another life after this. Praise God. Praise God. To those who are on Zoom, we greet you in Jesus' name. On Facebook or whichever media platform you're on, greetings in Jesus' name. At this moment, we're going to have our opening prayer. Lord, everyone. Praise God. Good to be here this morning on this sad occasion. We celebrate the life of our dear sister, her, a wife, a auntie, sister-in-law, cousin, 
whatever she is or was to each and every one of you. We know this morning that we're not here to mourn, but we're here to celebrate her life. And at this time, we're just going to give the Lord thanks for her life, for what it meant to all of us as we came in contact with her. You know, she's been a source of strength for so many of us. We're going to pray the opening prayer to, at this time, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, our high priest, our king, our redeemer, our friend this morning. God, we come before you another time. Oh, God, we stand in your presence, Lord Jesus. In your presence, there's fullness of joy. Right hand, pleasure is forevermore. God, we come this morning, Lord Jesus, in this farewell service, service of celebration, to remember, to reflect, oh, God, upon the life of Sister Daisy. Oh, God Almighty, we invite your presence with us here today. Oh, God Almighty. We pray that you will lend yourself to us this morning. Oh God, in this difficult time, we pray, Lord Jesus, my Savior, for strength. Oh God, upon the family this morning. Oh God Almighty, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for bringing them thus far in spite of their God. Only you could have done it. And so this morning, Lord Jesus, as we go through this procedure, we ask, Lord God, that you will be with them. Oh, God Almighty, that you will overshadow them this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, that you will wrap your arms around them. Oh, God, my Savior, there's comfort in you. There's hope in you, Lord God Almighty. And so this morning, oh, God, I place them in your care. Oh, God, my Savior, I pray, Lord Jesus, for the service, oh God, I pray, Lord God Almighty, that whatever be uh, transpired this morning, oh God, my Savior, that it will be to your honor and to your glory. Oh God Almighty, we pray in the name of Jesus this morning, oh God, that even through this process, that a soul, oh God, that have not yet come to know you, Oh, God Almighty, Father, in the name of Jesus, we'll see the need, oh God, to turn their lives to you. Oh, God Almighty, because it's for this purpose you came into the world. Oh, God Almighty, for this purpose, Lord Jesus, you went to Calvary. It was our sin, oh God, that paid the price. Oh, God, my Savior, paid, Lord God, for that trip to Calvary. Lord God, the scripture told us, Lord God Almighty, that while you were on your way, Lord Jesus, to be crucified, while you were on your way to be killed, oh God, the flesh realized, oh God, what it was up against and said, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass in the name of Jesus. But God Almighty, you couldn't help because our sin stood before you. Oh God, my Savior. And so you went to Calvary. Lord God Almighty, the pain on the cross was more than you could bear. But our sins kept you there. In the of Jesus Christ oh God and this morning we thank you for the very words it is finished man's redemption is paid we thank you for that moment we thank you Lord for that sacrifice we thank you oh God that you endured the cross went to the grave for three days wrestled in the grave with death and hell came back oh God with victory not for yourself but for us this morning and so this morning we know God that there's hope, hope of eternal life in the name of Jesus Christ. And so this morning, oh God, we're rejoicing in this hope in the name of Jesus Christ that one day on that glorious morning and that resurrection day, oh God Almighty, those that are those that died in you will rise again, oh God, and those that remain alive will be caught up, will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an I, in the name of Jesus, 
Oh God Almighty, and certainly God, we shall see you in that great triumphant morning. We pray this morning, oh God, that you will continue to strengthen. Hear us this morning, oh God. Take us in control and let your will be done. As I commit now the moderator and this service in your care, in Jesus' name. Can somebody say in Jesus' name? In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Such a powerful prayer this morning. Praise God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Praise God. Again, greetings in Jesus' name. This is your official welcoming greeting. Amen. Just giving God thanks. And we are leaving everything in the hands of the Lord as we proceed. Amen. If you look at our program, our program is a little bit lengthy. It's going to be time sensitive today. So I'm asking those of you who will be speaking just to remember that there will be someone else behind you. Amen. We have a two, two hour window, but we want everything to be done decently and in order. Praise the Lord. Praise God. As we proceed at this time, we're going to sing our congregational hymn. Great is thy faithfulness and it's in your booklet. So at this time we will stand one and sing great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness O oh God my father there is no shadow of turning with thee thou changest no compassions they fail not as thou hast been thou forever wilt be great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness
blessings all mine with ten thousand Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have need, let thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Lord unto One more time, great is Great is thy faithfulness Oh, yes, Lord Great is thy faithfulness Morning by morning New mercies Faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. We can all attest to that this morning because we are in the land of the living. He woke us up this morning and we are experiencing his faithfulness and his blessing one more time. Praise God. At this time, we're going to have our first scripture reading. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 and 14 by Shamik Bose, who is the niece. Amen. Well, that's changed to Roderick Powell. Shamik is not here yet, so I'm standing in. So the reading is taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and this says it's from verse 13 to 18, but I don't think it's going to be so long. So, here we go. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus, those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's words, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not proceed with those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Thank you. Praise the Lord. If we have that hope in ourselves, can we say praise the Lord? Can we shout a hallelujah? Oh God, for God, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. It, it won't be a quiet time. And it won't be a quiet place. Oh God, because God himself shall come. In other time he sent messengers and different angels. But this time it's so special. He's coming for the church. He himself. And he will take us to be with him. Praise God. At this time, we're going to have a, a, a poem from Shanika Bowes. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise God. I remember um, my aunt, she would be always just encouraging people. And, you know, even in her worst moments, um, she was just always encouraging. So this poem is, I 
I believe something that she just wants us to know. Don't grieve for me, for now I am free. I'm following the path God laid for me. I took his hand when I heard his call. I turned my back and left it all. I could not stay another day to laugh, to love, to work, to play. Task left undone must stay that way. I found that peace as the close of day. If my parting has left a void, then fill it with remembered joy. A friendship shared, a laugh, a kiss, a yes, these things I do too will miss. Be not burdened with times of sorrow. I wish you the sunshine of tomorrow. My life's been full, I savored much. Good friends, good time, a loved one's touch. Perhaps my times seem all too brief. Don't lengthen it now with undue grief. Lift up your heart and share with me. God, God wanted me now. He set me free. Praise the Lord. And who the sun sets free is, is free indeed. Praise God. I'm a glad pilgrim on my way, going to glory land. Jesus, my only hope and stay, holding me by the hand. It is such joy to understand things that I never knew. Keeping my promise to the Lord, I'm going through. I mean, what a wonderful feeling in my soul. He's mine. He's protecting me from the heat and cold. I'll do whatsoever he bids me. Praise God. Hallelujah. We know our Redeemer will bring us safely through. And he says he will guide us all the way from earth to heaven with his eyes. So Mr. Gordon, the Palmers, all your relatives, niece and nephews, Sister Daisy, as she's affectionately called, her fate is now sealed with Almighty God. Uh, there's no chance to make wrong or right. But we are here. We can make a difference. Pra praise God. We know she was baptized in the name of the Lord, of Je Lord Jesus Christ and she was filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, there are some attributes about her we could remember. Praise God. Praise God. What I remember about Sister Daisy, she had an infectious smile. Amen. Amen. She was of a quiet spirit. Uh, when you get her mad, she would <laughs> stutter a little bit. But where she is, she's not stuttering no more. Oh, Lord. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And what a place to be. So we don't have to weep for her as those who... The scripture never says you shouldn't weep. It says you shouldn't weep as those who have no hope. 
we have a hope. Praise God that there's life after death and there's better on before. What a, what a assurance. Praise God that God has made a way for us. Praise God. This time we're going to have the reading of our second lesson. Revelation chapter 4, 1 to 8. Donovan bows the nephew. Praise God. God himself will be them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Knowing you, Daisy, was a blessing. Rest in peace. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now when we hear the words of that scripture and the assurance that it has given us, a day to come, death is going to be no more. There's not, there, there, we won't be rolling a casket inside a church no more. We won't be grieving at a graveside no more. Oh God, what a time that will be. We're into the divine presence of God. No more sickness, no more suffering, no more cancer, no more high blood pressure. No more. What a time that's going to be. You know, sometimes we hear of some promises and they never come, to, come true. But our God has a track record of keeping promises. And they are promised in his word. And uh, it's going to come to pass. It's going to come to fruition one day. Just keep on believing. It's going to come to pass. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time we'll sing a, another con congregational hymn. How great thou art. Can we stand please? When I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. Oh my God, how great thou art. How great thou art. My soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, and through the When I look down from, from lofty mountain grandeur and see the growth, oh Lord, and feel the gentle breeze.
thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, how great the world. How great the world. And when I think. Just think about it. Should have been you. Sent him to die. Should have been you. I scarce can take it in. That on the cross my burdens gladly buried. Oh, yes. Joy, what joy. what joy! Oh, thank you, Jesus. I shall fill my heart. Then I shall buy. the world how great the world. yes he is so great how great the world. then sings my soul Yes, he's great. 
Hallelujah. He's great. He deserves all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. Amen. We find out that when you, when you use the phrase, how, in a sentence, you're actually asking a question. For the most part. But when we use the phrase, how great thou art, we're not asking a question. We are giving acclamation to God, how great thou art. He's worthy of all the praise, all the glory every time. He's matchless. He's indescribable. There's none like him. He's powerful. Oh, he has power to bring back from the dead. And we are promised that. Amen. The scripture lets us know that precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saint. Death is not always a bad thing. Uh, death is not always a bad thing. Some people, it brings them closer to God. For being absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. When one dies in the Lord, there is nothing better than that. Because you are into the divine presence of God. What a place to be. Can we shout hallelujah? If you have that hope, shout hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. As I know her, Evangelist Fox. Is she around? Praise God. In the meantime, say hallelujah. Say thank you, Jesus. Wave those hands and say thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Good morning to everyone. Um, a bit nervous. <laughs> and pray my strength in the Lord. I've seen some of Trillium workers over there that work with Daisy as I knew her. And so I did print out something from the computer that was sent out by them, but nevertheless, I will read my part. <laughs> okay, as I knew her, the late Hilda Palmer, I stand here today to speak about a kind soul, an indolent heart, a precious person, Hilda Palmer Gordon, affectionately called Daisy. Indeed, she was a daisy. We both work at the same hospital. She started a year before me. I met Daisy one morning around 20 years ago. I was on the floor doing my morning run. I would walk through CCU, ICU, CSICU every morning. As I was approaching the nursing desk, I saw this person smiling at me as I got closer. She said, you are a Christian. I smiled and we got talking. That was the beginning of a lasting friendship. You know her as Hilda. I call her Daisy. As, would, as I would visit, sorry, Daisy would visit me in her lunch break. I introduced her to our Wednesday prior service that we would have. Sorry. As we would have in the doctor's conference room on our lunch break. She started attending. She loved the Lord. This brought us closer because we have so much to talk about. Daisy loved her family with such passion. We would often talk about her family, her missy, as she would affectionately call her mother. Her missy was her everything. We would have opportunity to be in Jamaica. The same time, she visit me and I visit her because I have to meet her Missy. She is one person that really love and care for her family. When she speak of her brothers, this is funny. <laughs> At one point, I thought she had two brothers by the name Alex, and the one Alex. But I quickly learned that Alex did not, I quickly 
learn that Alex she loved dearly, but the one Alex is the one that tell her something that did not sit well with her. <laughs> he became the one Alex. You understand, right? <laughs> She would smile the next time she would say, did you see Alex at church? I quickly realized they are good again. <laughs> I learned never to ask questions because she would never say a bad thing about her family, whom she loved daily. As time progressed, she changed shift and started working nights, but that did not stop. Whenever we meet, I would yell, my Daisy, she would yell, my Heather, and we get talking. I would often say to her, I am not going to be late. She would follow me back to my area to continue our talk. Lord, we have so much to talk about. From what? On sale, to pack barrel for family in Jamaica, to church, the morning would get late. I would follow her back to the door. We were psyche and train. Oh my God, Daisy. Sometimes she would get her Timmy's hot chocolate. We say goodbye for that day. This would be our routine back and forth. As time progressed, she told me she is getting married and want me to help her plan her wedding and be her maid of honor. I was so happy for her. Here comes another chapter of her life that we started to venture on. But I suffer an accident which put me in the hospital for a month with my two legs broken. Oh, my friend Daisy. a second. She would come to visit after her long night shift. She would bring me minty, comb my hair, and would help to wash me before she head home. I did not attend her wedding but she promised to bring me goodies, which she did. She exemplified all that it means to be a nurse attendant. She is compassionate, kind. She is extremely patient, focused, always strive to, for excellence in her work. Sorry. She is extreme, sorry. She got married to the love of her life, Alvin Gordon, but that did not change her. We still laugh and talk. Oftentimes she would say, I better go now. Alvin must be wondering where I am. She was such a caring person. She loved her Alvin to no end. When we would meet in the morning, she, she is the morning star that brightened up your morning with her big smile. She had a big heart. She loved people. No matter who you are, she was ready to give a helping hand. So everyone she come in contact with just cannot help but to love her. She never let nothing get her down. She kept her trust in God. COVID come about, and because our entrance and exit changes, I hardly see her. But on that fateful morning in July, I saw her as we greet normally, as we would greet each other, I yell, my Daisy, she yelled back. I told her, you lost weight and looking so nice. 
But her response was, I am not trying, but I am losing weight. I say, go check it out. Because we were standing on the top of the stairs, our conversation was brief, not knowing that would be my last day I would see my friend alive. Daisy, you bloom in the hearts of everyone you come across, leaving your fragrance in many hearts. You will be greatly missed by your friends, colleagues, inside and outside of Trillium. Also your church and most of all your family. Daisy, my friend, you are a ray of sunshine an extraordinary woman of God. You hold to your faith in God to the very end. What more can I say? We love you, but Jesus loves you best. Goodbye, my friend. Sleep and take your rest. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well said, well said. That was coming from the heart. The fragrance of Daisy. Romer in her life and in our lives, the flower of Daisy. Praise God. You see that one over there? I'm talking the one, Alex. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. The one, Alex. Alex and the one, Alex. Two make one. Praise God. At this time, as I knew her by Sonia Calder. Read by Chastity. Her niece. Hello, everyone. The following message is from Sonia Calder, her friend. In loving memory of a dear friend, Hilda Gordon, affectionately known as Daisy, you will all be, always be remembered as the person who supported and walked with me during my darkest days. Remem reminiscing the Sunday afternoon, you took time to walk home from church with me, and you listened, and you, in your own way, you encouraged and gave me the strength to face another day. As Helen Keller said, walking with a friend in the dark is better than walking alone in the light. Thank you for the many meals we cooked and shared together at your home at 2580 Eglinton Avenue West. Although we have not seen each other for many years, the bond that we had was not forgotten. We are coming from a mighty long way. And although your journey has ended, Daisy, you will still live on in, our, in my heart. A quote from Helen Steiner writes, writes, when you ask God for a gift, be thankful if he sends not diamonds, pearls, or riches, but the love of true friends. Sonia Calder. Praise God, praise God. Heaven is better than this, oh what a joy and bliss On the streets of shining gold, in the land where we never roll Heaven is better than this, oh what a joy and bliss I love the screeching and the testimony too, but
more than this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. At this time, we're going to have um, a tribute by our co-workers. They will come up together and one will speak. Praise the Lord as they come. It's a blessing to have your co-workers at your funeral. Uh, because, you know, <laughs> some people would say, that lady, that Daisy, I'm not going. Because of example, what she showed must have shown some good examples. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Isn't God amazing? Yes, he is. He really is. <sighs> no man is an island. No man stands alone. We need each other. We have worked with Hilda for a couple of years, some of us more. Um, I'll pass you over to Iva, who has a few words to say. Work with Hilda for many years, and uh, she's very, very nice person. I went to her wedding. Um, I can't remember what uh, what year it was, <laughs> but it was at her wedding. The husband, I don't know, because I saw him that that once. <laughs> nice seeing you again. So when we just want to pay our respect to her, okay, and uh, we pray that uh, the family will be strengthened by the Lord, and. Um, we all have this road to, um, to, to travel, and we ask God for strength that we can, um, um, we pray God for strength that we can um, um, celebrate with the family her life. My name is Bev. My name is Roslyn. My name is Maureen. My name is Sheila. My name is Yasmin. My name is Carol. My name is Halden. Again, our condolences to the family. God bless. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, ladies. Amen. Seems like, seems like they could have made a nice choral. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. We're thanking God for them. Praise God. At this time, we're going to have a tribute from Marva Powell, sister-in-law. instantly fell in love. I have gotten to know Daisy over the years. I got to know what she liked and what she didn't, and I respected those boundaries. She was not afraid to express herself by saying, and I quote, I'm just saying. She always says this because she's telling you, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but I'm just saying. Daisy, you impacted my life, our lives. When I met Daisy, she took me to church, no place else, and it has remained that way. She would get up every morning, and she would wake us up. Church, even if it's past the hour, we'd talk about it from the night before. We cooked so that we could make it to church. I'm always grateful, and will always be grateful to Daisy. Daisy was a woman of grace and principles. Hardworking, and I admired that about her. She always had time for an encouraging word, as you all heard. A Bible verse, even on the day I'm in a hurry, 
And trust me, I had to stop, even if I'm late, because she did not make it easy. I will miss those days of her requesting a certain menu because she watched the cooking channel and I would end up cooking the meal alone. Oh my God, but it was worth it. She enjoyed, always complimented, and was appreciative, and that was priceless. I'm so sorry for how, for how much pain I saw Daisy endured with this horrible disease. And when asked, how are you today? She would simply say, I'm coming along. God blessed me with another day. Those words were comforting to us. Daisy was family. You're forever in our hearts. I remember one of our most common conversations. You always looked at me and say, if only to get one foot in heaven. My Daisy, you're in heaven. You kept the faith, you loved, and you were loved. Thank you for the memories. Take rest in the palms of Jesus. Thank you, God. Praise the Lord. According to the word of God, Daisy has kept her appointment. Hebrews 9, 27 lets us know that it's appointed unto men once to die. But after that, then comes the judgment. You know, I like to know the meaning of stuff, so I went and looked up the name um, Hilda. And it means battle or glorious warfare. Battle or glorious warfare. And she did fight this disease. Amen. But what this has do, done, she has not lost. It has taken her into the presence of the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Just a joke about Daisy. Um, she and Marcia, her sister-in-law, were supposed to go someplace. And um, it was winter, but there was no snow. So Marcia told her that, um, you know, I think you should bring your boots just in case. But they said, no, 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 just, I'm just going to wear my regular shoes. After they leave the building and came outside, there was a whole bunch of snow outside, um, very high. So Daisy had to tie on plastic bags over her shoes to get home. <laughs> Amen. She don't have to do that no more. She can walk on streets of gold. Oh, what a place to be. Never grow old. For she made her reservation for her final destination. And she have changed her location to her mansion in the sky. Gonna wear some new clothes and shine white robe. Walk around in new shoes. Oh God Almighty, can we praise him? One day we're gonna go there also. This is not the end. We're gonna be miraculously transformed out of this place. From all our troubles and struggles, sickness and suffering, we're going to be in the divine presence of God. I don't know about you, but do you want to be there? Do you want to be there? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God, praise God. Shout a hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God. At this time, we're going to have a tribute from Brother Shane Palmer, the nephew. Put your hands together for him as he comes. Hallelujah. Can we praise the Lord? Hallelujah. I say, can we praise the Lord? Hallelujah. I'm going to to my family, to the Gordon family. Auntie Daisy, well, she was one of my blood relatives that I know that lives in Canada. And she loved me so much. All the time, she'll big me up. All the time. To the point, I look at her like, I'm not even doing much. <laughs> Um, she was a person I can run to when mom was being hard on me when I was a child. As you know, Marcia Palmer was an authoritarian type of parent. <laughs> um, due to times, I, um, when I was younger, before she got married, she would take me and my sister out to Hyde Park and various other places in Toronto. I always was fond of the memories. And when she got married, we kind of drifted away because she was tending after her husband as she's supposed to. Um, fast forward now, when she was in the hospital, um, when she was going through a sickness, one time she went unconscious. And then um, she, they, were, they were able to revive her. And then she looked at us like, why do you guys wake me up? One thing I noticed, I'm like, wow, 
in a moment like this, you don't want to be alive to see your family. You want to be caught up to heaven. So I realized that she was a very strong woman, very determined. Um, you know, I didn't catch, get a chance to go with her traveling as I wanted to in the past. So it's something I will deeply regret. But I love my aunt, Auntie Daisy. She means everything to me. And I promise her that I'll make it. And now it's my turn to prepare myself for the coming of the day. Because she made, she, she made her step. She did her thing. And now it's all of our turns. If you want to see her again, we have to make it. And you pray for me in Jesus' name. Yes, yes, yes. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I'm also told that Daisy was a very determined person. That whatever she wanted, she was going to thrive for. So she wanted to buy a car and um, the funds wasn't turning up. So she says, you know what? I can't afford to get a car, but I need a car this weekend, so I'm going to rent a car. So she go rented an old car someplace. In transition to wherever she was going, the car broke down. And she had to call the one Alex to come pick him up. <laughs> we are thanking God for the one Alex today. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. At this time, we're going to have a song by Nikisha Peart. And she's the psalmist today at this time. Nikisha Peart. God bless. Praise the Lord, everybody. My condolences to the bereaved family, and I just hope and pray that this song will encourage your hearts this morning in Jesus' name. Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows come? And why should my heart feel lonely and long for?
Oh, I sing because I'm happy. Yes, and I sing because I'm free. God's eyes is on the sparrow, and I know he watches. Can we do that just one more time? Can you stand and sing the song? I sing because I'm happy. Oh, and I sing. Because I'm free oh, His eyes is on the sparrow And I know He watches me And I know And I know Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And that's real personal. I know he watches me. He watches me. Tell yourself he watches me. Praise God. I just am going to ask the church to stand again. At this time, we'll have the eulogy. Which will be read by Mr. Alvin Gordon, the husband of Daisy Gordon. Daisy Palmer Gordon. Alex. Alex Palmer. Both. Put your hands together. together. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God. It is only in this life that we have hope. Then we have all men most miserable. But we know that we have a hope. Somebody said, My hope is built and nothing less but Jesus and his righteousness. God bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I don't want to take up too much time uh, because the preacher is coming and I don't want to uh, stand in his way. I believe he has a word from, for you. And uh, the husband is here as well to say something on behalf of his wife. But I want to thank God today for his mercy and his love. I want to thank God for Cousin Bev over there. And Daddy, God bless you. God bless you. Good to see you. <laughs> um, let me just greet, greetings, and good morning to everyone. Uh, good afternoon now. Thanks for, for, thank you for being here to support our family through this difficult time. And we just want to th talk about Daisy for a little bit. My sister, her pet name, that's what her pet name is, Daisy. Daisy, my sister, nickname, Knock Me Daisy. <laughs> because when she was at a young age, her knees were too close together, especially when she was walking. So we call her Knock Me Daisy. Daisy falls in the fourth place out of six children between the union of Percival and Advira Palmer, but also have other brothers and sisters and a total of 12 of us together. So it was really a big family. She was born on March 20th, 1968, in the parish of Manchester, Jamaica. 
Daisy and I goes way back as I can remember. We were the last one to leave home when the family was going through that last transition. When everyone was trying to go out into the world to make a life, I remember the last dinner we were trying to make. We did not have any money to buy flour, so we just used some cornmeal to make the dumplings. And everything fell apart in the pot. And we had a good laugh about it. It turned porridge. <laughs> As a young girl growing up, her achievement was incredible. She was the first one out of six children for my mother and father to pass her common entrance exam. And if you're from Jamaica, you know what that is all about and get accepted in Manchester High School. It was a great blessing and achievement for the family. When everyone's family have a child or children passing their exam, Daisy decided to study hard. Even at night, she would stay up late and study under a very dim light. And you know what that light was all about. And as a result of that, she passed her common entrance exam for high school. Throughout her high school age, it was a real struggle for her. My father already passed in 1978, and I was the, the same Alex, the one helping out mostly with her books, school fee, etc., etc. After she graduated, she moved to Kingston to live. And throughout her years, she had demonstrated a certain level of leadership, very good example for her peers and siblings, a very strong love for her family. Because after she had migrated here in Canada, she would remember to send a little money back home to Jamaica for her mother and siblings. Daisy, you have gone from us in the body but you will always live in our hearts. We will always remember your kind ways, your love for your family. You will always be missed by your family, friends, and co-workers. You will take your rest now. But we know one day, when Christ shall come back for his people, we hope to see you again. Sleep, my sister. Take your rest. And we'll see you again. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here to celebrate with us today, celebrate the life of Daisy, known as Hilda, my wife. I met, I'm trying to hold it. I have been cried so many times. I wonder if I have any more tears left, night and day. Seeing her going through her sickness, and me taking care of her, going back and forth, leave work, come home, taking care of her. And one day she asked me how I do it. But I said, I don't know, but God give me the strength. I'm here for a reason. I met my lovely wife and best friend Daisy, the year 2003. I got to know Daisy and introduced her to my family. She was very nervous, but when we arrived, 
my family was cooking and she complimented the food, this, of course, made my family love her, which in turn made her happy and putting everyone at ease. It all felt natural, and of course, those of us who know my wife know that she appreciates delicious food. And when and and we are and we're not afraid of expressing this. Daisy and I got married back in 2004. We have been together for 17 years. I made a great it made a great impression of knowing much she loved God. Her faith the career path she took and her principles. And it also helped that she would laugh at my jokes. If I want to get her to talk whole night, I will just sometimes sing the song, say, Don't rock it the road as we travel along. And she will start and we will up the whole night. And she will call names from way back when people don't, who I don't even know. But it was such a great time with her. She absolutely loved and enjoyed what she did on a daily basis. My wife worried at, worked at Trillium Hospital in the ICU for 20-something years. On her way to work, each and every day, she would simply say, I am off to do what God has chosen me to do. Be of help to the helpless ones. She did this with all her heart. That's who my wife was. Daisy also enjoyed traveling and ex experiencing different things. She appreciated life and all that it had to offer. We dreamed of growing old together. I had, I had promised to protect you for as long as we both live. We had big plans, but now all our plans are shattered. This time, I could not protect you. I am so sorry, my love. During the last days that you had, you, exp you expressed to me that you were ready to go. I prayed this would not be. I, I got to spend one last birthday with you and that I treasure you. We are, were brave to the very end. It was painful to see you in so much pain. Even then, you held on to your faith. Even so, so more you truly fight the good fight. Our house is not a home anymore without you. I miss you. I miss your laughter, your infectious smiles, where you sit at the table and always waiting to see me come through the door with that smile. I will not see that anymore. Uh, even though I didn't write this, but you know, I know time is on us, but just to say that you know, there was a night I had a dream and I was telling her about the dream and there was a time when she got unconscious and she woke up. She was reminding me about the dream that I told her. Because the dream that I had, it was, she was telling me that I want, she wanted me to took her to a gate. And it's only me should take her to that gate. And I told her about that dream. But when we went to the gate, she stopped and she said, she's not ready yet. I turned to her and I said, but we are at the gate. And she said, no, I'm not ready yet. I said, but what you want to do? 
because we come from so far and we are here now. But when we are about to turn around, I saw the hands of Jesus stretching out and telling her to come. And she reminded me of that dream. And I remember March 15th in the hospital, I was there and she was telling me and she said, Alvin, I'm ready. I'm in so much pain. And it's too much on you. And it's too much on me. I am ready. Because you t that dream that you tell me about, with the Lord stretching out his arms, that means he's ready for me. And I tell her, tell her to just, in my heart, I want her to hold on. I want her to fight. But seeing her suffering, day and night, but thank God, the suffering is over. No more pain. No more sickness. She's walking with Jesus. Hallelujah. And I read from Second uh, Timothy 4, 7, 8 said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith henceforth. There is laid up for me the great crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteousness judge, will award, me, award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Praise the Lord. Amen. Some folks are building homes down here and planning ahead. So busy with their fortunes, they forget what Jesus said about the wars and earthquakes and the fig trees budding leaves. But there's a group of for the word praise the lord it's time for me to decrease there's someone here greater than i am praise god it's time for the word can we stand at this time please at this time i turn you over pastor glenford Bingham. 
Praise God. Let me just take time just to give condolences to the Biri family and also to greet all of our friends and loved ones who are gathered here today. Amen. As we celebrate the life of Sister Hilda, Sister Daisy, Amen. we give God thanks for her life. Amen. And we recognize that as we have heard so many things today that she has touched many lives, Amen. even within her work. As if she has heard, I think it was her husband who mentioned the fact that she was declared that she was going to do what God amen, called her to do. Amen. We give God thanks for her life. I won't be long with you. Amen. I, I recognize that moments like these, for those who are grieving, words are insufficient. In fact, words are kind of meaningless don't remember a whole lot that was said. Amen. So I won't belong with you, but we give God thanks even for those who came along to support the family, that they appreciate your presence. Your presence speaks a lot. Amen. I want to share with you just for a brief moment, just one verse of scripture. Amen. And then I'll let you from the book of Revelation chapter 20, verse 12. Reads in your hearing. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. Father, we thank you for this moment, even now as we are partaking of your words. We ask that God that you bless, speak to our hearts now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. For a brief moment, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to speak to you. Amen. For about 10 or so minutes. Amen. Just indulge me for that time and then I'll get out of your way. And I want to just talk about for a little while the story of our lives. The story of our lives. One thing that is certain is that none of us have any control of how we got here. For some of us, it was, oops. Yes. Some of us, the parents planned, they wanted to have us. Some of us, they would consider it to be an accident. We have no control. We just got here. But what we are responsible for is the rest of our lives. And our lives are filled with series of decisions. Each decision that we make in our life, it helps to write the stories of our lives. We have heard so many things today about Hilda, Sister Daisy, and all the things that we heard. There were things that were written, that she did, written concerning her life. When you think of a book, that you have some books that are, in the interest of time, small books. You have big books. Um, you have books with different various colors. In fact, you have books with even various shapes. But it is not the shape of the book. It is not the color of the book. It is not the size of the book. It is the content of the book that makes the book. And so as it is with all of us, some different color, different size, different shape, and all different, all of that. But that's not what really important. What is important is what is written in the book. And over the whole time, but also when you look at a book, that a book, you find a book, many different pages. As I said, some, you have a few pages, and even those few pages, you can have a, a great seller, number one seller. And so it is that God has given us different time different time sister days time has expired the book chapters of a book finished. each day that we get up god has allowed us to write new chapters sentences 
paragraphs of our lives. And it is those things that we do that will determine what happened after. And look in the text that I read in your hearing. The Bible said I saw the dead and the Bible said that, that the books were open. Books, plural, many speaks that the books were open. And then there was another book. The Bible lets us understand that the other book was a book of life. So it is what is written in the books that will determine whether your name is in the book of life. Hallelujah. Everything that we do right now, we are writing stories of our lives. I remember going to school. I'm quite sure many of us remember. You go to school and they will give you tests or exams. There are some of us, if you go to college or university, sometimes there are exams for three hours. I remember sitting exam for three hours. Some exams are one, some are two hours. In the big school or the college, some people will finish their one hour exam and leave. While you're still there sitting, writing yours. It, and there's there a time, I, I still remember, we talk about, Elder Palmer speaks about uh, the common entrance. And those of us, you, when to school, there's a time you go and when you're writing and they will say to you, if the teachers are good or, or the invigilators are good, they will say you have 15 minutes left. It tells you that you're running out of time and when you recognize that you're running out of time you gotta hurry up and ride fast it means whatever you're doing you gotta do it now because you don't have a whole lot of time not only that but after a while you would hear the teacher say pencils down for sister Ilda God allowed her to write a life story over many years. There came a time when, it's, when God would declare on March 22nd, 2022, God said, pencils down. It means that there is nothing left to write. Those of us who are even in this room and those who are even under the sound of my voice, what we're doing right now, we're writing the stories of our life. And the things that we do in this life will determine. Because the Bible tells us that we were judged out of what was written in the books. Everything that you do. Every day that you get up. Every day that I get up. I'm writing the stories of my life. We want to make sure as we write the stories of our life. That we want to make sure that Jesus our God is the center of our lives. Because if God is not the center of our life, then our life would not be worth living. If God is not the center of our life, then our life would be a wasted life. That's why the Bible is, because we know as we come even to moments and times like this, that we come to grips with our mortality. We recognize that there will be a day. There will be a time when it will be my body that is laying down here. There will be a day and there will be a time when it will be your body laying down here. When God will say pencils down. When God will say it is finished. So we got to make sure that we write the stories of our life. Let our life be centered around God. Because let our life be a life where God is the center of the life. That when we come to the end that we can truly say, this is my story. This is my song. Praise him, my savior, all the day long. Blessed assurance. Oh, in the story of my life, in the story of your life, it, when it comes to the end, that it would not matter what kind of, of car you drive. When you come to the conclusion, it will not matter if you wear red bottom shoes. 
it will not matter. Yeah, yes, it will not matter if you wear Gucci or Armani. Are you wear Dollarama? It would not matter what you wear. What will matter is that you're written, your life, your name is written in the book of life. Oh, when I come to the end of my journey, I want to make sure that my name is in the book of life. You, you, you and I, we're writing today the stories of our life. Oh, I want to say blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. That's what we want to experience. Everything that we're doing right now. There are people that I, I know won't be long getting ready to close it up. I told you 10 minutes. I know we don't have time, but many people are writing their life story and they're doing things and things and putting value on things that doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm quite sure, I'm quite sure that you might have seen people going to school and sometimes they spend a whole lot of time doing the pages. You know when they go to school and they say, well, you, you have to have a nice page when you're writing the composition. Yes, you're doing the work. You have a nice, and they spend effort putting on the pages. The pages look good. But there was no content. Mm -hmm. and nothing wrong as I get ready nothing wrong with having the multivitamin nothing wrong with doing the exercises nothing wrong with eating right and all of those things nothing wrong with wearing good clothes nothing wrong with all of those things but you gotta make sure while you're doing all of that that it is well with your soul you gotta make sure that you can say it is well it is well it is well with my my soul the story of your life it is the story of your life of your writing sister Daisy wrote the story of her life and we have heard and I, I, I was touched and moved by that the fact that she said I, I'm ready Ooh. I'm quite sure that many of us go to school and I'm hurrying up. We uh, went to school and there comes a time when, when you, you go into exam and you have confidence. And in fact, you just, as we would say, breeze through it. Ah, yes. And you're just ready. You, you just finish. They give you two hours and you finish in an hour and you're sitting because they say you can't leave yet. Oh, God Almighty. They said it's not time. It's too early for you to leave because some people still waiting right in their test and, and you might go out and meet them when they go to the washroom and tell them the answer. So you just sit down and you're there just waiting. Oh, God. Sister Daisy went through and all of that and she said, I am ready. I'm ready now to go. The question for all of us as we're writing the story of our life, can we say that, God, I am ready? Can I say Lord I am ready I'm gonna sit down but oh, we sing it earlier on and we say when he shall come with trumpet sound oh may I then in him be found dressed in his righteousness the Lord faultless to stand before the throne the story of our lives we're writing as I get ready to close it up, what are you writing even now? If you're here and you have not given your heart to the Lord, I know it's a funeral service. I know it's a celebration of this day's life. But maybe I just want to let somebody know right now that God is simply saying that it's still time for you to correct some mistakes. It is still time for you to fix some things. It is still time for you to look over your life and say, God, I've made a mess but God said that you can turn the page I wish I had anybody this Sunday it's Saturday afternoon that say God I'm ready to fix some stuff I'm ready to make it right I'm ready to give my heart to you I'm ready Lord to write you as the center of my life the story of my life it is the story of your life that you're writing hallelujah as I close, the Bible said the books were open. Everything that we do, God is 
it is there. I, I, I close with this. That all of us, when we come into this life, we have like the blank pages. It is the decisions that we make that determines everything. And right now, even this Saturday afternoon, gathered in this house of God, as we celebrate, thank you, Sister Ilda's life, it is an opportunity for somebody to write and say, I'm putting this day, Jesus, as the center of my life. I'm putting this day, it's been the day that I say that on the fifth. 14 day of May 2022 I write it in my life that I came to the funeral to celebrate the life of sister Daisy oh God almighty and I surrender my life to the Lord the story of your life how as I close will your story be read what is you've heard Elder Grange told you the Bible tells that, that it is appointed unto man once in that but after death the judgment will be determine what is the content of your story it is the story of your life you're writing right now everything that you do and everything that I do I'm writing I'm writing what you write determines your eternal destiny i don't know if there's anybody in the room and i know we're here to celebrate our life but somebody say god i want to surrender my life to you today i want to start by saying god remember this day hallelujah that even in death sister daisy is using her life for the purpose that god sent her hallelujah even in death that she's letting you know and you know and i know hallelujah that time god is saying pencils down i close with this there are some teachers and that they won't even tell you that you have 15 I, i'm quite sure you, we have people in the room you've been there and you're, you're so busy doing the you don't even realize a time is going until you hear them say pencils down. pencils down you gotta put it down god is simply saying that the message for you and for you and for i today there are indicators there are signs that we have received that's telling us time is running out Hallelujah. I, I, I recognize, I, I know I said I'm closing, but minister, I, I, I celebrated. Yesterday was my birthday, and I, and I told him that I don't celebrate birthday no more. I said, I said you know, I, I said, I, I don't get excited about birthday anymore. Because every birthday reminded me that I'm closer. I said every, every time the birthday comes it reminded me that I'm running out of time. I, I know I'm closing, I'm closing, I'm closing. Every birthday comes it's a sign that God is saying it's that you have, a, I don't know what number but God knows the number. God knows the time but he's telling me I'm running out of time. That everything that you're doing God said hurry up and do it. If you're giving your life to the Lord God said hurry up and do it. If you're going to surrender to him, God said, hurry up and do it. I know Sister Daisy's life in, as a person now is, she's not here anymore, but she's, her story is still being read. In fact, her story is still impacting lives. And you will remember, just like in the natural sense of You've read the book and the story is still there. You've heard her husband speak of the memory. You've heard her brother, nieces and nephews and loved ones speak about that. What the thing that she did was written in her heart. There in her heart and in our memories. The question for all of us as we gather, as I close. 
you were writing the story of your life. And time wouldn't permit me to preach it. But let us understand that all of us, God said, there's a book. That's your, your name and my. I might not be able to have a, a bestseller concerning me. Not like Trump. If, if he wrote a book, everybody want to read about Trump. Bestseller. I'm not as famous as that. Nobody would want to really buy a book about Bingham. Bingham who? But, but. One of the things that is certain that there is a book that we are writing. That the eternal God is interested in. I pray today that we will leave this place recognizing, being conscious of the fact that we are writing the stories of our lives. God bless you. God bless you. And the Roach will be coming to pray for the family. And then be followed by the funeral director to give instruction. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you. Can we all stand at this time in the name of the Lord Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, the good shepherd that giveth his life for the sheep, the lamb for sinners slain from the foundation of the world, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we thank you for today, Lord God. We thank you for this moment and for this hour. We thank you, Lord God, for the life of Sister Daisy Gordon. Oh, Lord God Almighty, we thank you for all that have been said and done, Lord Jesus, help us to recognize, oh God, that we are writing a book. Oh Lord God Almighty, and help us to write it good. Father God, in the name of Jesus, as we hear your words, Lord God, we pray, Heavenly Father, that, Lord God, I will not fill in deaf ears. But oh God Almighty, help us to recognize that there's coming a day, Lord God, when these words will be ringing in our ears. Oh Lord God Almighty, I pray at this time for the bereaved family. In the name of Jesus Christ, oh Lord God Almighty, you know what they are going through. Lord Jesus, this is a moment, God, that they need you more than ever. Father God, I commit them into your care. Lord Jesus, my God, my God, you know what it is. Oh Lord God, my Savior. Ah, oh, God, to lose a loved one. You know, oh, God, I can recall, Lord Jesus, when you went to Lazarus' grave and you saw Mary and Martha were weeping and grieving. The Bible tells us that you wept. But Lord Jesus, I thank you that you have become our great high priest forever. One whom can be touched, hallelujah, with the feelings of our infirmities. Lord God, in that moment of their lives when, oh God, as they grieve, oh God Almighty, the passing away of Sister Daisy and loneliness won't leave them alone. Let your presence be with them, God, for in your presence is fullness of joy and at your right hand they are pleasures forevermore stand by your husband stand by oh God oh, the brothers Lord God the sisters the nieces the nephews the aunts the uncles Lord God Almighty the nephews all oh God the rest of the family the friends and loved ones God Almighty there will be that empty space at the table Lord God her presence will not be in the house anymore mighty God so I commit most of all her husband into your hand into your care Lord stand by him Lord give him strength give him courage Lord Jesus you are the father of mercies you are the God of all comfort comfort them on every side Lord Jesus hide them under the shadow of your wings 
in that moment Lord God when it seems like they are all alone let them feel your presence let them recognize that you are there with them Lord God hear from heaven at this time have thine own sweet way let your divine will be done and your name be glorified Lord God and in all of this help them to recognize that you know what best bless and sanctify we pray as we give you the glory and honor and all the praise and tell you thanks in Jesus name in Jesus name praise the Lord praise the Lord just before um, the funeral directors take over the repast will be held in close proximity to where you are you won't need your GPS it's right next door amen so at this time over into the hands Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As this concludes the service, we're going to have Pastor Elias Elt followed by Casket and family and friends falling in behind. Uh, she will be going to Jamaica later on at a later date. So please join the family as they do have their service and continue to pray for them. Uh, thank you on behalf of New Haven Funeral Center for allowing us to serve you. And thank you at this time. There's a land beyond the river that we call the, the sweet, sweet forever and we only reach that shore by fate's decree one by one we'll gain the portals there to dwell with the immortals when they ring those golden bells for you and me don't you hear the bells now ringing? Don't you hear the angels singing? It's a glory, hallelujah, jubilee. In that far off sweet forever, just beyond the shining river, when they ring those golden bells for you. The bells now ringing. Don't you hear the angels singing? It's a glory, hallelujah, to believe in that far sweet forever, just beyond the shining river, when they ring the golden bell. The angels singing, it's a glory, hallelujah, jubilee. In that far off sweet forever, just beyond the shining river, when they ring those golden bells for you and me. Oh, don't you hear the bells now ringing? Don't you hear the angels singing? It's a glory, hallelujah, to believe in that far off sweet forever, just beyond the shining river. When they ring the school and bell for you and me. When our days shall know their number.
crazy. If you give a little more than you take And if you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain There's a place for people like you if you stand up for those down on their knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light, give sight to the ones who've lost their way There's a place for people like you I've heard of there the streets are made of gold And when you get there, there's a hand to hold I believe when your day's down here through There's a place up there for people like you if you walk around with your heart on your sleeve And if you're trying to be the change you want to see If you lay down your life for love so someone could be saved There's a place for people like you Streets are made of gold And when you get there There's a hand to hold I believe When your day's down here or through There's a place Up there For people like you Mm-hmm. 